Today we're going to look at how to score collaboration. Should be very simple and straightforward. It's all about delivery on the day job, so all fairly obvious stuff. If collaboration doesn't help us to deliver operationally, what is ultimately the point of it all? Um, but to do that, you have to step back outside and look at the strategic imperatives. So are we getting the right level of innovation into our projects? Are we getting the best practice from our best projects shared into the one right in front of us? Are we leveraging the client relationships? Are we selling into the client? Are we getting their support? Are we garnering their attention for our strategic objectives? So how we score it is the simple measures that we used previously. Zero for fail, one for a pass, and two if any of what these things are doing good in those areas. So if we look at the typical structure of a tier one construction firm and just look at the different divisional structures, we could look and try and score these. So the main board and the divisional board, how they work together, now how much are they actually sharing in terms of best practice, innovation and client relationships? Arguably not too much. How much are they helping deliver on the day job? Arguably again, not too much. So this would be a kind of a low score, maybe a one, maybe a two, but you know, not really you know, that much going on there. Again, the main board with the business stream leadership, as we see over here, um, again, the influence to deliver innovation and best practice is quite limited. So these would all score you know, kind, of, kind of low, uh, again, with the enabling functions themselves, but they have a leadership function and maybe set some high level values but the actual day-to-day -day delivery is not massively influenced in those areas. So again, it would be quite low. Individual projects, unless they're pet projects driven by individuals on that board, again, they can you know, not get the full attention and full benefit of the experience of the people that sit there. Again, with external projects, unless they come under the microscope and get the full attention uh, from the start, the value of that relationship and that link is quite low. And as you go down again, you know, how much innovation is coming from these guys? How much innovation is coming from the business stream leadership? How much innovation is coming from the enabling functions themselves? You can see it's actually quite limited when you consider them and try and score them individually with their relationships. Uh, external projects, how are we getting you know, the benefit of what these guys do and the structure over to those external projects that the clients are paying for. The more I look at it, the more dilution of value I see. Again, when we take the typical business streams uh, and how they're broken up into the tier one construction companies, you know, what we're seeing is links between departments like investments and then with rail, again, it's kind of limited. You know, in terms of innovation, best practice, client relationships, you know, what is actually shared? How does that department help that department deliver on the day job? Again, it has to be said, it's very limited, maybe even a zero. When you look at rail and roads together, rail and aviation together, you know, unless we're going to start looking at multimodal transport interchanges, these relationships are very limited in the value that they create. You know, how much best practice are they genuinely sharing? You could almost think that they were competing against each other and working in silos throughout the tier one community and the tier two community, and arguably the client's own communities. You know, these things could generate a lot more value if they started thinking and acting in a different way. Maybe the opportunity uh, lies more with a regional civils type business and their links with roads. You know, there's an opportunity there to create better point-to-point -point journey times that clients can drive um, the, the value into uh, and maybe that could see a type of benefit. But you know, there's very slim pickings when you look around. Again, power could link to FM. Power could have a beneficial effect on all these, all these things, you know, solving the, the current stats problem and the waiting for UK power networks and the statutory infrastructure providers to help out major projects. 
uh, is something that you know, is a pet peeve of a number of people in the industry and something we could, we could address as an industry and address strategically.